What text messages mean to an anxious person? You're mad at me. You're mad at me. You're mad at me. You are writing a dissertation of why you are mad at me. See, this one's a little tricky, so at first glance, it seems like you're not mad at me, but based on that period, I know that you're mad at me. Everyone is dead, and also you're mad at me. <laughs> that is how I feel when you text me in the winter, and this is what you need to know. Barbie's majorly snubbed at the Oscars. Jessica Biel eats what in the shower? Dakota Johnson is probably still sleeping and Renee Rapp has beef with millennials. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, it's your girl Emily Curl and I'm coming to you live on Twitch and I'm so excited to be here with you all. I have a very special guest joining me today. He's today's show producer and an entertainment expert and most importantly, my very best friend. Kevin Chattel is here. Can we give it up for Kevin being back? Ooh, thank you for having me back. Um, we're so happy to have you back, Kev. I, I feel like it's been a minute. It's been, what, two weeks? Two weeks, I've been but it's been too long. I've been knocking on the door long. every day for two weeks waiting to come back. <laughs> we are back in our studio. We have our whole crew here. Everyone's here. Let's get our crew backstage. Um, this is going to be a fun show. So we have a yeah. lot to dive into. Let's start let's the show. Let's You're going to kick it off? Let's All right. So this year's Oscar nominations were announced on January 23rd, and there is a bit of controversy surrounding who was and mm -hmm. who wasn't on the list. And listen, you probably already heard this, but let's take it back a minute because I'm going to give you the Oscars rundown. So here's who is the most nominated films at this year's Oscars. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer led the pack with 13 nominations, Poor Things with 11, Killers of the Flower Moon with 10, Barbie with eight nods. Um, so this is going to be a big award show. It's on March 10th on ABC, and it's going to be hosted by Jimmy Kimmel. And we got to talk about the biggest snubs of yeah. the entire thing, which everyone has been talking about, Barbie. So here's the thing about the snubs, because of course it's been everywhere, but there's one point to be made. So many people have argued, you know, you can't possibly fit in every deserving candidate in every category, but the thing that is making this so buzzy is that this is literally the plot and the essence of the movie. Yes. Like, this is what the movie's about. And Ken was nominated. Like, had Ken not been nominated, and maybe none of them got, you know, nominations in those categories, but the fact that it is the theme of the movie, which is, you know, women being marginalized, and then both of the key women who brought this to life were not nominated, it stands out so... At, at this point, it's honestly comical. It's yeah. actually comical. And so it's so funny. One of my favorite creators, um, she posted a full breakdown. So if you haven't seen this yet, this is her basically being like, we had a test as a society to pass and we failed the test. Check it out. Remember when people said that the Barbie movie was too basic and that our world wasn't that sexist? Barbie movie was a test. Um, <laughs> we failed. The only explanation for Greta Gerwig being left out of a category in which she overperformed in is that the Academy Award voters um, believe that Barbie directed itself. Like, you know, um, the dishwasher just unloaded itself. Or um, the kids were raised by themselves. You know, the, the entire way that we invisibilize female labor in a society in our economy. But Gerwig wasn't the only woman whose labor went unrecognized. Margot Robbie, who actually fought for the movie to exist, um, convincing executives that it would have mass appeal, also got shut out. At this point, you're wondering, well, I guess Ryan Gosling didn't get a nomination either if everyone's getting shut out. No, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. People are saying that the Academy lost the plot of the movie, but actually they just brought it to life. According to their own data, the Oscars are the Mojo Dojo Casa House, without the Lazy Boys. 67% of the voting members are male, and 81% are white. To quote America Ferreira, who did earn a nomination, thank God. We have to always be extraordinary, but somehow we're always doing it wrong. I've said it about the Supreme Court and I'm going to say it about the Academy Awards. Institutions only have the legitimacy that we give them. The Oscars is losing viewers every single year. Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie single-handedly revived a dying business. So if the Oscars want to remain relevant, maybe they can start by not shutting out the two women who would give them a shot at doing that. I think there, we couldn't have said it better. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Greta Gerwig truly, quite simply, like, revived the movie experience, especially for women and the way that we approach yeah. going to movies, dressing up, and like that whole experience. Billion dollar movie. I mean, mm. it broke every single record. I wonder how Jimmy Kimmel will address it that night. Like, it's yeah. it's dominated yeah. to the point where they're going to have to do something about it at the awards show. How he brings humor into it, or maybe they give them their own moment. Like, I, I feel like you can't. we can't end on that note, so there's going to be some sort of maybe like reparation in some capacity that they'll they'll bring in with like levity. Don't you think? I'm also just so curious if Ryan actually wins for his category, what that's Do you think he'd like bring them up or like- I some, think like... something big is gonna happen here yeah. because- about coming? Do we- Do you think they'll be there? Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Oh, either do you not? 
who knows? I guess we'll have to tune in and see. But I think that, you know, they're going to, there, there's going to be something that ends this on a positive note, knowing how, how dominant this has been. Yeah, I mean, because the whole thing is just honestly absolutely absurd. What I will say is Ryan Gosling did issue a statement about this. Mm. So we have his statement here. We won't read you the whole thing, but, like, go check it out. But he basically said there is no Ken without Barbie and there's no Barbie movie without Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie, the two people most responsible for this history-making, globally celebrated film. What I appreciate about this is, like, I feel like so oftentimes, and we don't, we can have a whole discussion about this, but, like, there is this sort of, I mean, we know we live in a patriarchal society that oftentimes I feel like when men are put in these situations where they're the only ones awarded for a masterpiece that was mostly mm -hmm. created by women on the backs of women, that they don't take the time to acknowledge where they came from. And so I do appreciate that Ryan did use his platform to speak out, to be like, hey, just so you know, like, thanks for the nomination, but here's how it happened because I think a lot of people are like well Ryan deserved that nomination and sure he did mm -hmm. but not without the labor that women put not in not without make the them, woman who, who envisioned this entire thing who made it yeah. come to life for him to and play an amazing way, role a Barbie movie could have been so many things y'all remember when you watched the trailer in the first place like we knew the hype before yeah. that even was released and the way she did it is is so visionary so anyway so uh, that so that's the whole thing yeah. so but I'm so curious for everyone watching who do we think is going to take home best picture I mean that's like okay I tallied of the 10 nominees. I knew you I've, did some homework. You always do. Guys, I love math. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen five of the 10. I don't know if anyone else oh, is tabulated. Really? Do y'all feel like you've seen a higher percentage of these of the nominees for this category this year? Yeah. Killers of the Flower Moon, Barbie, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Poor Things. I, I, might go see poor, things. I might go see Poor Things later tonight. Uh, tonight? Yeah, who did <laughs> <laughs> <don't talk> <laughs> uh, uh, What else did I see? Uh, Oh, Past Lives. I just watched... Have y'all seen Past Lives? Yeah. Oh. No, Past Lives Past is actually, Lives is is actually so amazing. Good. It's so good. Okay, okay. Leaving like a child. Yes. Okay, end, John said I Oppenheimer. I didn't think I would. Oh, yeah. What y'all... Oh, and The Holdovers. Yeah, The Holdovers too was fantastic. Oppenheimer, I, like, developed a back condition sitting in that <laughs> seat. I was in, like, the third row. I don't think I even saw it in IMAX. I mean, I was staring up for three hours, but um, so brilliant. That's, that's the How favorite. would you rank your top three? Like, what would you say? Uh, for Best Picture? Yeah. Um, I'm Since you've put, seen so many, because I feel like okay. you've seen more than I have. Okay. I'm going to put Barbie at number one. I'm going to put The Holdovers at number two, and I would put Oppenheimer at number three. Wait, I haven't, oh, seen, but I've been wait, I haven't seen The Holdovers. Oh, wait, so y'all have seen The Holdovers? Has anyone seen The Holdovers? You haven't seen The Holdovers? Oh, now's the time to watch it, too, because it's very, it's like winter break. It's very, it's not a Christmas movie, but it takes place at, it's so. Oh. Al Giamatti will win that category. He yeah. is extraordinary. Okay, John also said Anatomy of a Fall was pretty damn good. And really? I have heard so much about that. I haven't watched. To be honest, I'm still so behind. Since our last, okay, because the last time we did a Twitch Live, we were talking about the Emmys, and y'all absolutely roasted me for not seeing a lot of the stuff. <laughs> but guess what? I watched Beef, everyone, okay? Oh, you did? I watched Beef. Wait, did anyone else finish Beef? Yeah. Okay, yeah. it is quite simply a phenomenal show. It is phenomenal, and it went so many places I was not expecting. Um, so anyway, shout out to the it. Emmys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, Beef is actually really good. So yeah. now next I'm in my movie swing, so I'll catch up before March 10th. Right. Um, but speaking of awards, from the Oscars to the Grammys this weekend, award season is in full swing. So like we said, we have a huge one coming up this weekend, the 66th Annual Grammy Awards Music's, music's Biggest Night. It's taking place this Sunday, February 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Do you want to come over for that? You can oh, watch it with me. 100%. I thought we were already <laughs> counting on that. It will mark the first ever broadcast performance from this sphere, which I think is actually really cool. Performances by Burna Boy, Billie Eilish, Billy Joel, Dua Lipa, Travis Scott, Olivia Rodrigo, Luke Combs, and Trevor Noah returns for his fourth year of hosting the show, which mm. that's a long... I feel like the host turnover, that's a tough job. It, he's the best at it. He's so good. Do y'all agree? I think as we talk about award show hosts and ones that keep kept coming back he is at he's the very the, top of the list yeah, yeah he yeah. crushes it every time you're he's never in the headlines for the wrong reasons but he doesn't dominate for you know like exactly. he's, he's the perfect he's the perfect the and for the grammys too yeah 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 um so let's talk about the breakdown for a little bit okay. um it's his for like we said trevor's fourth year of the show Typically, male performers make up more, not typically, sorry, male performers have made up more than two-thirds of the winners of Album of the Year in Grammys history, mm. but this 2024 show, it's ladies' night, okay? And I'm so excited for this because women count for seven of the eight nominees in the top category. We're talking SZA. I was waiting for everyone to cheer. Olivia Rodrigo, Lana Del Rey, Miley Cyrus, Janelle Monet, Boy wow. Genius, and Taylor Swift, who can also make history as the first performer to win the award four times for wow. album of the year. First off, let me start by saying that category was like all all of my favorite music combined into it's one. It's your like, playlist. It is. Like yeah. I feel like that is the most epic category. So the first question I'm gonna, you know, address to the group is who do we of, of all those albums? 
Who's top of the list that you think is like, oh my God. maybe your personal favorite, maybe not who's okay. going to win. What album did you, were you obsessed with? <sighs> I have, it's no What's secret. What's your rules for best album though? No skips? Oh my gosh. It, yeah, okay, let's do like the album that you were going to like put on no skips. This is like your go-to, you know, all the words, like this is it. I'm going to one-up you because obviously my vote will always be Taylor, but I for this year and this particular category, the hype around SZA's album, like I think... I think takes the cake. I think you have to think beyond what you listen to and what, what's no skips for you, but like what was of the whole year for an artist and, and how meaningful it is for that artist, I think SZA wins. SZA had I the mean, most Olivia nominations. I mean, Olivia had a big year too, but yeah. yeah, anyway. SZA has nine nominations, okay, the most. We, I actually got to see SZA at Jingle Ball this year. Did you? And being so up what, close, in New York? first off, I was next to the speaker that I actually thought the speaker was inside my body. <laughs> I was like, I'm actually might explode. It was okay, like I couldn't hear for Don't like, brag about how close you were to the stage. We know. <laughs> I work at iHeart. <laughs> um, I actually couldn't hear for like three days after that. But what I will say is SZA's stage presence is a kind of unlike anything I've ever seen. Mm. And she like brought out swords. I feel like her dancers were amazing. Like I'm just so excited. <laughs> like you always talk about like knives and swords when we're together. Yeah, I really do. Oh my God. So, oh, slice? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, slice yeah, yeah. is back. Um, so it just was like, it was such an amazing show. And then Olivia was also incredible. And um, okay. okay yeah. So. We're okay, you know what? Chat. John says Janelle Monae's album was so good. I have to agree with you. I feel like this album did not get enough hype. It is so epic. Really? Yes, it's so good. It's like sexy and fun and like flirty, but still chill. Like every, I love this album. So John, I'm right there with you. Ryan says Miley's Pl Plastic Hearts album deserved this nom. Would that have been nominated this year? I remember I looking like into this so because it should have gotten a nom. She was like right on the cusp of like being able to enter with the last mm. album. I remember because I love Plastic Hearts as well. I also think we need a very clear understanding, even for the Oscars too. When, when, what's the time frame for what can and can't be nominated? I think they should address that in the show too. Y'all, yeah. real quick back to the Oscars. I know a movie we've both been obsessed with. Oh yeah. Have y'all seen Good Grief on Netflix? Has anyone you seen have, Good have Grief? Have you seen Good Grief? Oh Oh my, each, I challenge, I'm looking each and one, every one of you in the eyes, you as well, watching this. You have to watch that movie, it's so brilliant. But then I, I'm wondering, when can it be not? It just came out at the end of December, is that qualified? When is Plastic Hearts, when could? I yeah, know, I don't, that is that. always also confusing. That's why the Emmys was so confusing too, because yeah. it was like such a late show. And like Antihero being nominated, it's like Antihero has been on the airwaves since, you know, yeah. 2022, like okay. late 2022. You're so right. You know? Okay, John has a good uh, description. Yeah. Janelle's album I describe as LA, black girl, femme, lesbian, summer chic, which I oh, feel like the perfect, I like Say that's no the perfect more. culmination. So if you haven't listened to that album, like that's the perfect way to describe it and add it to your list. Can I go back um, to SZA for just a sec? Yeah, too? yeah, absolutely. I was looking at Variety's predictions and, and of, of all of these categories, and I thought this was interesting about SZA. It says, the elephant in the room is the Recording Academy's reliability in overlooking great R&B or hip hop flavored albums. If Beyonce has yet to prevail in this category, despite multiple nominations, can she pull off what Beyonce couldn't so far? And on the other hand, if SZA can get a le like the leading nine nominations more than any other artist and not win any of the top three awards, their question is, what will that say? This could be a test of just how diverse the growing votership is or is not becoming. So I think that's interesting to keep an eye out for. No, it's actually fascinating. First off, the fact that Beyonce has not won more Grammys is... It, well, sorry, let's clarify. She's won the most Grammys. Yeah, but, but like, like for, for that category. Year, for that category. I did not... Did y'all know that? That she hasn't won for album of the yeah. year in my research? That show. is like... How, literally how? How does that add up? <laughs> I, I feel like, and then I went and looked at her numbers, and they're they're staggered. 88 nominations and, and 32 wins. So no, I just... Yeah. hadn't won a Grammy either for I think they only have like wow. Grammys in their entire history. Oh, do you say the Beatles, you said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't always add up, but I think specifically for that award being so coveted. And yeah, I feel like curious. Grammys has a has a history of, uh, mm. uh, well, we'll keep it, you know, yeah. we, just, we can't always, I feel like it's not always what, what we think or, or who deserves. Yeah. So. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But I'm, I am very curious to, to see that too, especially since, uh, yeah, being so nominated. And um, again, like the amount of history that could be made in so many of these categories, but looking at those, those, the seven of the eight being women. Yeah. Who's the man? Who's the, who's the eighth? Do we know? Oh yeah. Who is, who is that? For album of the year. Do y'all know? Oh, oh, it, it is John Batiste. Batiste. Okay, I okay, love John Batiste. Batiste. Okay. If there's I love one Batiste. man in the category, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll give it to John. Um, okay, wait, I did want to also add, um, oh, the other nominees included. Um, oh, thank you, Producer Chick, for, for clarifying two Oscar noms are January 1st, oh, midnight? December 1st. So it literally midnight. is the calendar year. 
Yes, for the calendar ne- year. Really? Okay, okay wow. Well, well, well okay, then I guess okay. my Good Grief wasn't nominated then. <laughs> I guess it could have Shoot. Been. <laughs> but I wonder if they submitted for it, honestly. That's a good question. Um, okay, so wait. So I just want to go through, again, the, the leading ladies. So Sizzle Leads with nine nominations. And then followed by that is Phoebe Bridgers, Victoria Monet with seven each, Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, Miley Cyrus, and Olivia oh. Rodrigo have six nominations each. So again, it's going to be just like such like a, a heavily like female dominated show. And I'm just so excited about that. Yeah. I feel like like all of these are so deserved. Um, there are certain, by the way, you all know this. There are certain years that the lineup is just like outstanding. Do you yes, know what I mean? Like yeah. some years kind of feel like an off year. Like that lineup is is incredibly exciting to see. Yeah. And just, and by the way, to see them all in the same room. I mean, I want to see, I want to see Taylor and Olivia. I want to see, like, I want to the see some of the these interactions. Oh. Dude, everything's going to go viral. I cannot wait. Oh. Um, well, you mentioned Taylor Swift, so we got to Did discuss. I? <laughs> what? She's let me nominated. let me preface by saying that that y'all okay, but our team knows this. Like everyone watching knows this. I'm a Swifty. I don't think you'll understand that. Like Kevin is Taylor Swift's number one fan. I would Which, say. Which I, I don't know if I can really truly claim that. Yeah, because there's a lot of insane fans. But what I, you're yeah. up there, like you love Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift means a lot to you. More than anything, yeah. <laughs> More than you. <laughs> Um, okay, so we did want to add one more thing because then we're going to talk about the big thing that just happened. But mm-hmm. if Taylor Swift wins a album of the year at this year's Grammy, a couple things will happen. She will hit her 13th Grammy, which we know 13 is a big number for me. Or for her. <laughs> for me and as for well. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about me. <laughs> for her. Um, and then she will have the most album of the years of any female artist ever. Wow. So this would be really, really wild. By the way, do you think Travis will go with her to the Grammys? Think, what do y'all think? Do you think Travis What's the football schedule? Well, know. he I, I, is, he is he practicing? Is he yeah. practicing for the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't what think. Are he, our I don't think t- he's not showing up. This is I don't her. Think so. This is her night. Oh, yeah. She'll be at the but Super Bowl. But she's gonna be at the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's but different. it's different. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Really? See, I, yeah. I feel like he's gonna come. You do? Oh, Nick, you do? Really? Oh. Wait, Nick, what do you, why do you think so? You just, just cuz? Yeah, if he's at all her games, he's gonna be like, well, I gotta come and support you. Okay. I bet, right? You know what's I been, see, I can see that too. Yeah. What's been circulating on the internet that I love is this whole dialogue that Taylor and Travis and like the Grammys and her flying across the world is, is basically the plot of High School Musical, just like exponentially, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like Troy and Gabriella, the athlete, the singer, oh, anyway. Fully. So, it, yeah, I, I don't think he'll be there, but, um, but it would be a huge night for her. And I'm, you never know when she wins an award what she's going to say when she gets on stage, what she'll announce, what she'll drop. You totally, know, like, so totally. Or like we'll who see. she'll like, not make a dig, but I feel like she's been getting a little feistier these days yeah. of like not taking any shit. Um, should we go to the next? Let's go yeah. into the next. Yeah, so yeah. from the movies to the music world, women are dominating whether or not they're getting proper recognition from their peers. And we thought it'd be interesting to take a look at a few recent headlines and buzzworthy moments from some of our favorite women in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. So again, we had just talked about Taylor. She had a big weekend. So I did have to double check this, but the Chiefs played the Ravens on Sunday. The Chiefs won and now they are going to the Super Bowl. It was a huge game. So the Super Bowl is Sunday, February 11th in Las Vegas. Also in the sphere. Oh, oh I was like, is no, it? I'm not kidding. Um, Wait, production team, are we okay? <laughs> okay, 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 I'm making sure. Okay, um, a little behind the scenes action. So we were kind of like we were just saying, like Taylor is about to go on her era tour, her European tour. Yeah. We were breaking down, will Taylor go to the Super Bowl? What do you think? Uh, there's, I don't think there's any question at this point. There's no question. In fact, we did the math. So let's check it out. Did we, did we do the math? Or did we, we didn't. Did I watched the math. the math. I watched the math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so while we're going to throw up the clip in a second, but essentially uh, time zones and math are not my thing. Yeah, but yeah. what we have decided or what we found out is that, um, yeah. is that Taylor will be playing a show in, in Tokyo. Tokyo. On the 10th, which everyone has been quick to realize we are behind. Tokyo is ahead. Basically, the math has been done, and there is there, there's a way she can do it. It's just a matter of, like, is she going to be flying in the jet lag? And then she has shows in Australia shortly after, so it is a... Um, there's, okay, yes. Jenna Bush Hager did a great job on the Today Show. Okay, let's, yeah. let's, let's take a look. Here's what she's going to need to do. Oh, you got oh, I have a pointer? Oh, my gosh. It's old <laughs> okay, school. so here we are. We are in Tokyo, Japan. Taylor Swift has a concert here in Tokyo the day before the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. Here the thing is, so you may think not possible. Tokyo is 17 hours ahead of Las Vegas. Okay, the doors open at her concert at 6 p.m. Okay. at the Tokyo Dome, okay? A typical Taylor show goes until midnight. Right. So if she goes directly to the airport 
after she's done with the concert, she pops on that plane of hers. It will be around 7 a.m. Saturday morning in Vegas. This oh. flight right here, it's not short. It's anywhere from 10 to 14 hours. This says 10, the prompter says 14, who knows, okay? <laughs> so then she would land in Vegas around 9 p.m. Saturday night. She could change, she could go to some pre-parties. So the answer is, she could do it. If anybody could do it, it's her. Now that does not factor in weather. That does not factor any weather in either Tokyo or in Las Vegas. <laughs> But we think Taylor can make it. She First can off, and she will. The jet lag I would feel from that trip, but like you're probably just like I, high off adrenaline. We're both from Atlanta. Going home two hours to Atlanta, I get back. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> And then again, everyone's quick to point out, obviously, she has a jet that will take her across I mean, all the way to the Super Bowl. But I really think you have to factor in, like, she's also coming and also off of these weather. huge also shows. Also weather. Like, what if you think it's delayed? It's like, people will be watching out for it. The, I mean, there, we're not to go into all the numbers and details, but the way she has boosted even viewership for, for these games. There was one tweet that really stood out to me, too, which is... Um, this, this man who had covered the NFL for ESPN for, for many years um, was talking about his 14-year-old daughter and how they watched the games together. And he said, I actually feel bad for the Brads, Chads, and angry dads who spent the year complaining about Taylor Swift interrupting the, their football because he said, I spent the season trading Swift and Kelsey memes with my 14-year-old daughter who previously did not care about football, which I think is a, an important part of this process is like a bringing in new viewership and audiences. Yeah. And, and to be honest, like... Maybe had any football fans in the room too, but like had the the Lions maybe won. I think America was rallying around that story for their team. But I think at this point, with the Chiefs and the 49ers, I think we're all just in it for a good time. And I think like everyone's gonna be peeking to see yeah. that cutaway of, of her being there. And let me be totally honest with you. Like, and I feel like this is like this is something interesting, like being a Taylor Swift fan. Mm -hmm. And like, and you know this too, it's like there is a real fear, I feel like, with fans who like she's meant so much to me. It's not like this is a recent phenomenon. In yeah. the last year, I, I've loved her. It's like I love her from like high school. It's like I I remember like loving like Taylor Swift in the beginning and I, f I really really feel like there is a Taylor Swift fatigue happening yeah. and that's a scary thing again when you feel like your favorite artist is like it's annoying or they're everywhere or whatever it's like it's a challenging place to be in as a fan too because you're like I don't want to feel like who I'm supporting is like indicative of you know what I mean of like yeah. having someone ever because that's not my personality I'm never in someone's face I'm never whatever but like so it's a tough place to be in I feel like as we like navigate this because if people have stuff to say, people have issues with Taylor being shown everywhere. But again, it's the price of fame. And I think it's just interesting to me. What? I'm looking at John's comments too. We are, we are tuning in for Usher. Yeah, that, that, are, is are, are. that is a fact. That is a fact. Okay, so I thought this was interesting. Rich Eisen, who's like a big um, like sports commentator, had some thoughts when, people, when it comes to people complaining about like Taylor's on TV too much. And here's what he had to say. Mm. One last thing. We showed a photograph of Taylor Swift. I can't believe I have to say this. I'm just going to say it. I, I tweeted it out. And this isn't virtue signaling or anything stupid like that. What is the matter with people? The toxic masculinity that shows up in my Twitter timeline, my ex timeline, because she's having fun at a football game. I, I, I honestly don't understand it. Because not everybody wants to see... What six shots of her during the game? No, I get it. As so a, as opposed to it's more what, what, what? Like you know, like, honestly, so more mustache shots. I'm yeah, no, I, I mean, no, people are there for the football. Maybe, but she's don't the come most famous. She's literally one of the most famous people on planet Earth at a football game, seemingly enjoying herself. She's never going to be anonymous the rest of her life. What is she supposed to do? Just sit there in a corner and not support her boyfriend? Is that what? It's, is that just like? Yeah. And and if they keep showing shots of her. You know, I understand, like, you know, like, let's see her after she, after Kelsey drops a pass. Really? I mean, what's the big deal? As a matter of fact, this is the greatest thing ever. There's a whole bunch of people that normally don't watch so football games. I'm going to throw a crazy, <gasps> a crazy stat at you. Go ahead. So I read a New York Times article on this about, like, the whole Taylor Swift thing and how much is showing. I'm so curious. How much do you guys think Taylor Swift is actually shown on, on the screen? Like time wise? Time wise. Like how much? Total? Yeah. How much would you say? Two minutes. How much would you guys like say? Like over the whole season? And over over one game. Oh, over one game? Less than sixty less than, yeah. seconds. So yeah. yeah, it's less it's yeah. a minute, if that. Yeah, it's probably two, less than two minutes. Yo, it's 25 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. They did a calculation. So again, the Brads and the Chads. I'm getting fired up about the no, Brads and the Chads. No, me too. I'm just like, can y'all relax? The Brads 25 and the Chads and the John. <laughs> and the John. <laughs> and the John. <laughs> this is for you, John. Sorry, John. No, I'm but... sorry. 
She's actually on screen for less than 25 seconds <laughs> of a three hour game. Yes. So I just wanna be like, can we all take it down a notch? And I'm just, I'm just curious if we were in a Barbie world, okay? And all the women are on the field, all the, you know what I mean? Like they're th and they're ta talking to someone's boyfriend in the stands. Like I just yeah. don't feel like that would be the same narrative. I, I just feel like it's like a very patriarchal society. Like don't show the Taylor. Like again, and just people pick her apart. I just wouldn't be like, how many of y'all are billionaires on a world tour? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, here. Um, in that moment, I, I saw a clip online too of this past game and it was on CBS and they were promoting the Grammys, which are this weekend. And they did a cutaway shot, naturally, because they're talking about the Grammys, of Taylor Swift to the game. She was watching the coverage of it. Did y'all see this? No. She was looking up at the thing, and then, like, the people with her were like, ha, 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 like, got all uncomfortable because they're like, we're on TV. And Taylor just kind of looked up again. She, it's not like she's waving, like, you know, she, <laughs> she was watching, and she, like, was kind of staring, like, why are they showing me? And then she read the lower third, which said the Grammys. She goes, oh, the Grammys. So, like, <laughs> it made sense to her in that moment, but she's not asking for it, which I think is yeah, an important yeah, part. Yeah. Um, can I... Can I mention that I did post a TikTok the other night? Oh my god, I do. This TikTok actually has gone so viral. <laughs> you, you love TikTok. I love Sometimes TikTok. you just throw something up. You're like, "There's no way this would gain traction." Right? Kev, I think, casually has 2.5 million <laughs> views. Like <laughs> on this one video, I, I don't want to overhype it, but anyway, I posted this online the other day. <laughs> Can I also say that the comments on this video were actually hysterical. hysterical. Uh, what was the one that I loved? It was like, y'all want to hear the 10-minute version? Yeah, it was, no. you know, so at the tour, she does her 10-minute song. She always starts with, do y'all have 10 minutes to spare? And the crowd's like, yeah. And then this one's like, do y'all have 10 minutes to spare? Because I don't. And then she just like walks off stage. Um, but anyway, en enough about Taylor. Uh, okay, okay. We're excited to see her in the next uh, few weeks. Yeah, the yeah, Grammys yeah. and then the next weekend. Next um, okay, so another, another uh, rising pop icon that's been making headlines is Renee Rapp. So she has been on the Mean Girls press tour, and I'm sure, again, going on TikTok, you've probably seen, she's been a bit unhinged, and I have to say, I've been loving it. So here's a first example of Renee Rapp's entire essence on, on this press tour. And if anyone, anyone, tries to hurt one of my new friends, I would take them out. I would make them suffer so much that they'd wish they were never born, and if they ran, I would hunt them down. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Thank that. you, Kathy. <laughs> so good. It is a perfect descriptor. She has been all over for this and is, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. Y'all agree? Like she is blazing yeah. her trail in this moment of like, I D G A F, like no other. Okay. She's like, I don't. I like how you just said that. <laughs> That He's acronym, over. oh, wow, what? Yeah, I can um, spell. <laughs> she reminds me of another celebrity, another music artist, who, who has the exact same energy. Do you guys have any guesses? Have we yeah. talked about her today so far? No, we haven't talked. Well, we've kind of briefly mentioned her, but they have the exact same energy to me. Abby, I know you know. Who? Billy. It's Billie Eilish. Oh. Don't you feel like it's something about, like... I feel like Billie's a little more, maybe, polished with it. Like, she's not... She's... Do you think? I feel like Billie's kind of wild. Maybe not. Do y'all disagree? I think, I think Billy's a little kinder. I think Renee Rapp's just kind of like, yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah. She, yes. Yeah. Like, oh, well, you know. Yeah. Um, the vibe is similar. Yes. Yeah, the vibe is similar. And, I'm, and I, and I kind of love it. I love it. I think we need maybe a few more examples of like what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, with, so here's an Renee. example of Renee's press tour. Actually, I did say the other day, I was like, 2024, I would like to let my grudges go. Mm. And then the other day, I was like, that's mm. not happening. <laughs> and I was like, there's no <laughs> way. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It's like, I why is that dog know. sat gay? And it's like a dog like this. And it's like, because that, <laughs> that dog is gay. Like, to be right. clear. 33, 33. Actually best ass I've ever seen in my life. And I don't even mean that in a funny way. I mean that in a real way. Any so, notes for her? Any, any notes for Rachel? Date me? <laughs> See, I'm gonna be biased, but like, I think that like, gay people are like, s just generally cooler and better. No offense, I love you. No. Oh. <laughs> Talk your shit! Talk your shit! Come on. It's refreshing. Can I just say, like, I really have missed, like, unhinged celebrity behavior. Like, a little bit of a weird, of, like, wow, what are they gonna say? What are they gonna do? Like, I yeah. feel like that was, like, very reminiscent of, like, the 2000s era. But, like, now it's nice. It's like, okay. Because I think so many people for a long time were like, let's have really polished brands, polished Instagrams, uh -huh. press tour, junkets, clips here and there. Renee is just, like... Uh, 
I, the I D A G. How do you spell? <laughs> I D G A. Thank you for typing it out, John. Thank you. Um, no, yeah, fully. I'm, I'm. I love it. And this was interesting, though. She was on Watch What Happens Live too, and what she said to Andy Cohen was also it was interesting. Take a look. Okay, yeah. Some things are a little wild. There's something about Karen that's just so funny to me. Yes. She's uh, so yes. funny. And I'm very ageist, but like... You're Karen, ageist? I am, actually. You don't like older people? or say that? What? No. <laughs> no. Okay, you yeah. are ageist. Okay, we gotta dig it. Okay, screw the bobbing heads. Happy we gotta to dig you. into this. Yeah. Okay. So you're a little ageist. Her. Yes, but oh, I'm okay. With her. Okay, okay. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, am, are you ageist towards me? No, no. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Just curious. Okay. okay. You just... what? Uh, would, uh, okay. Okay. Um, you just look down on older people or don't care for them? You just you, don't, you don't care want them for them. driving on the road. What did you think of that? Here's my thoughts on this. I actually think what Renee's doing is a genius strategy, and I'll tell you why. I remember, like, the best piece of advice I got when I started, like, again, when you're going into, like, entertainment or being a host is that you can't be middle of the road. You either have to be, like, really loved for one thing mm. or you have to be polarizing. Like, you have to be, like, out there or insane or whatever, you know, to, like, get people talking about you, to get you interested. And I think what Renee's doing is she's, like, listen, I think it's naturally her personality, just, like, times 10. And I think she's, like, let me say some really wild stuff that's getting picked up. And guess what? It's working. No press is bad press. Mm -hmm. So she's on this wild press store. But, again, we're loving her more. But, again, she's creating this polarizing dynamic. So I really think that there's a lot more strategy going into it than just her being unhinged. I mean, maybe she's also just drunk, but <laughs> either <laughs> Potentially. Time. <laughs> she said something recently, too, which struck me, not about ageism, but um, about country music. And this resonated with me. And we're both from Georgia. You, you've loved country music forever. Oh, forever, That's, yeah. like, been part of your life. I did not. Like, did anyone else just <laughs> not grow up vibing whole, with country the music? The whole team, I've Like, there, there's something to be said about, like, let me just read what she said. She said, I'm from the South, so I detested country music for what feels like forever. And not just the sound, but kind of the culture growing up, the culture surrounding that music never felt safe to me. Mm. Um, and then she said, but that changed once I found Casey Musgraves. And I thought that was so interesting because the exact same thing happened to me. I saw Casey Musgraves for the first time at MSG with Harry Styles. She opened for Harry Styles, which, like, dream night. Oh, yeah. Come on, oh my those God, two. No, that's insane. But there, it was so polarizing growing up gay in the South. Like, just the lyrics being about trucks and beers and girls. And, like, it just nothing about it was appealing. But then Casey Musgraves and, and that genre of country music came along. But specifically her, um, Golden Hour. Like, that yeah. whole... It just changed the genre. And I'm glad she said that, too. I found that interesting. I though. did, too. And I also feel like, again, being a country music fan for so long, there are two types of country. Mm. There's, like, the trucks, the beer, the red dirt road country. And that's not my type of country. Yeah. But it, there is something about the narrative and the storytelling and, like, the the inclusivity that comes with some of these artists. Yeah. I'll never forget I felt that same way. Mine was even before Casey. It was with an artist called Cam. Do you guys know Cam? Oh, is? I love Cam. Yes. Cam, I, like, we need Cam to release some of our music. We but, do. But Cam was always like um Ugh. was always like speaking up about like the inequality she saw in country music about inclusivity about the lgbtq yeah. plus community and she opened for sam smith wow and that was the most amazing show wow and like again it's like these artists that are like pushing the barriers and genres of what mm -hmm. in the past country music has been so that's so cool uh, to hear john says dixie chicks were my first country music act that I liked. Yeah. yeah. The other artist that stands out in the same category is Kelsey Ballerini. Yeah. And now she brought out drag queens at a show semi-recently yes. and that was yeah. a whole moment. It's like these country artists that are bringing other people who may be, Mickey Guyton, it's um, Maren Morris. It's like they're they're talking about things in that space that need to be addressed. Agreed. But anyway, I love I that Renee a... owned up to that too. Yeah, me too. I love that. Like I want... And then Casey liked her post about it anyway. Okay. Oh, she did. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. Wait, I love that. <gasps> okay, can I also tell you one other cute story is yeah. like, Kelsey, going back to Kelsey Valerini, because you know I'm such a huge fan of hers, like, she recently re released um, Rolling Up the Welcome Out, which was, like, a whole, like, divorce album. It's Masterpiece. so, it's so good. It's so good. And so, Kelsey was saying that she lived in Nashville, and, like, when she moved out of her apartment with her now, like, ex-husband, she was looking for a house. She was like, I really want to, like, to have a house to create this album, to create this piece of art. She found this house that she loved. But she's like, meanwhile, another country artist was bidding on this house and they ended up getting it. So I didn't get this house. And she's like, come to find out it was Casey Musgraves. So Kelsey ends up moving down the road and she told Casey, she was like, if you ever sell this house, like, will you give me a call? So Casey 
moves, ends up moving out of his house, calls Kelsey and is like, listen, do you want, were you serious? Do you want to take over? They're like, we didn't even need a broker. We didn't need a release, whatever. She's like, it's your house. Kelsey said she got there and Casey was like, I also got divorced in this house and like I, or got divorced, moved into this house. <laughs> it's like, got the worst look ever. <laughs> She's like, I also got divorced and moved into this house and she called it her healing house because that's when she wrote her post-divorce album. Wow. And then Kelsey did too and now that's where Kelsey lives and she's falling in love with Chase Stokes. Ugh. I'm just like, wow, it's such a full circle moment. Anyways, I can't talk about country music. <laughs> I know, anyway. Anyways, I just, I we're like, moving like, on. Moving on. Moving on mm -hmm. Who cares? Okay, so <laughs> next up, Dakota Johnson <laughs> is speaking out about our 14-hour sleep schedule, which you probably saw this in the news cycle. Like, this was released, like, in the past like, week or so. Yes. By the way, she was just on SNL, and she absolutely crushed. Did y'all watch this week? I don't know if y'all have been watching lately. This I've been week, watching. This week was one of the best episodes in a very long time. Yeah. Okay, why do you think so? Dakota. Yeah. Dakota, I mean, the writing was really good on, on most of the sketches, and Dakota, like, her acting was... Superb. The the please don't destroy sketch was so it's funny. So a foot in the door and so much more. Okay, if you haven't seen it yet, she does this sketch with please don't destroy, um, the the tree of the three guys and they do like the pre tape skits. It's so so funny. But they address being like nepo babies. They talk about like they just roast each other back and forth. It's really, really funny. So go look that up. And then we also had to pull a clip of her talking and clarifying her fourteen hour sleep schedule on Jimmy Fallon. Check it out. Dakota Johnson likes to sleep for fourteen hours a night. The Wall Street Journal. That's a long time to sleep. I didn't even say that like that. That's a long time. To, you like to sleep 14 hours? That's No, wow. I said that I could easily sleep 14 hours, but I don't, like, demand it. <laughs> I'm not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> but then all these I other people picked up. I know, but look, everything bizarre. Page six, the bizarre. USA Today, it started a whole debate. Is that too much sleep? Oh. Is that enough? Who, who gets to do this? No one sleeps. Why is sleep bad? Like, why? Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no, just asleep. I lo we love to sleep. Could you sleep for 14 hours? Uh, you know me <laughs> better than anyone else. Answer that. Go ahead. I feel like you could sleep for 16. <laughs> Easy. I challenge, I challenge Dakota Johnson to a sleep off. She said, she said, sleep is my number one priority in life. The truer words have quite little. I'm never sorry, but she is so fucking funny to me. She, had, she actually kills me. I need a show of hands in this room of who actually genuinely loves sleep. Like, sleep is a, is a, you, not, and not Donnie? just like, I need it. Donnie, you don't? You don't like to sleep? How much do you Because I really do think, like, there are certain people who, like, <laughs> what? It's too young. Not yeah, it's like, true. Is there anything better than, like, a, a, a solid nap? Like, even better yeah. than a 14 night. You know, 14, you, night, 14 night sleep, that'd be great. Hibernation. Just take me out for a couple weeks. <laughs> a 14 hour night sleep is just like a good two hour nap. You know, you know? You know who would argue is something better? What? Jessica Biel, and that's eating in the shower. So Jessica Biel recently Strange. said that she eats in the shower and she wants to start, to start a movement. So this is her talking about eating in the shower. Guys, thanks for all these questions about shower eating. I'm just so thrilled everyone's so interested. I really want to, you know, start a movement, a shower eating movement. I think for people who are multitasking, it's just going to be such a huge relief in so many ways. Here's my rules with shower eating. A ledge is really helpful. Something that you can stick your cup, your yogurt container, your coffee, your espresso, whatever it is you're enjoying. But I like to take a bite or a sip and put it on the ledge. People are being funny on the internet right now. They really, They're like a little weird. It's like the Reese Witherspoon eating snow thing. It's like, <laughs> oh, these people are just posting something so random and then the internet gets all... Going. Okay, but here's what I will say. When I first saw that, I was like, wait, that's so weird eating in the shower. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, huh. Because I, I don't know about you, but like, I'm a, like, I'm a long shower. Like, you yeah, take, know. you know, you take your Sunday. <laughs> I, and I know what your shower looks like. You ain't eating that shower. There's no, she talked, let me be clear. She talked about a ledge. Raise your hand if you have a ledge in your shower. And I'm not talking about a little thing for your shampoo. <laughs> I'm talking like that. far enough away from the water that it would be, un exactly. I'd have to have Pretty Boy holding it. Like, <laughs> your cat. <laughs> pretty Boy, my cat. Um, okay. Yeah, I do have products galore, but I take really long showers. It's like, you know, you have your Sunday shower where mm -hmm. you like, you know, you do everything in the shower. But like my showers, <laughs> not, no one cares about my shower schedule. Here's what I will say. I started thinking about it, I'm like, that actually does kind of sound fun to like no. bring your coffee in there, no. sip a little bit under no. warm water, you take a bite of cereal. No. Let me let me challenge you so hard right now. <laughs> name, I'll just give you quickly, name two foods that actually sound good to eat in the shower. Cereal. Crispy. With milk? Yes, I love no. milk. No, yeah, that's psychotic, I right? Chug, we can I all can agree. I can chug a gallon of milk. I'm not kidding. I love milk. I, this was me prepping for this topic. <clears throat> Come up with one. You would need a popsicle in the shower? A popsicle in the shower, that's like summer. No, that's like... <laughs> I drink beer in the shower. Drink beer. 
Okay, yeah. Okay, I, that I, one? I okay, touche. A beer in the shower, not terrible. <laughs> Listen, I a burger, soggy. Yeah. Coffee, water down. Like, there's nothing that benefits from added water. Like, s soup. Yeah. Like, I know no. someone who, who no. changed their, like, shampoo thing. Like, they have one in the wall to put bourbon in there. Who? It's called alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I broke up with him. So we moved on. <laughs> that was a red flag for me. I said, huh. Oh, my God. I don't God. think that's shampoo. I'm coming up with who it is in my head. And I oh, think do I you know? I think I have a strong <laughs> intuition. Uh, it's not. <laughs> oh. Oh. Y'all, I, I did have a brief stalker once, and I'll have to share that story at another time. <laughs> totally. Uh, my, Anywho. My, my button on this topic is, is quite simply this. We... The American people do not have ledges in our showers. We no, just, we don't. Like if I had, if, yeah, if I had a patio in the back Peele corner, shower. sure. A Nespresso I could plug in the corner, absolutely. Oh my but. god, you'd plug it like <laughs> that would, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, speaking of dating, Sofia Vergara is out on the market again. Okay, and Bad Bunny featured a song. Sorry, has a song that featured Sofia Vergara. Okay, and so she. Sorry. <laughs> what, Bad Bunny has a what, song. <laughs> what did Sofia Vergara do? Tell me. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Bad Bunny features Sofia in a song. And then Andy Cohen, of course, asked her about it. And she goes into her dating preferences. Check yeah. it out. Your reaction when you learned Bad Bunny featured a lyric about you in, in the song Monica. I threw my phone. Really? And, and by the way, he's single. Well, I don't know if he's single. Well, no, let's Would not you go ever crazy. Date him? Let's don't. not go crazy. Okay. He's, no, okay. he's younger than my son, Manolo. <laughs> Is that the rule? They can't be younger than I my mean, son? I mean, for me, that, always been that. I've always had that rule. No, to me, they can't be younger than 50. I'm 51. Really? Oh, okay, 49, 49. <laughs> That's your rule? Yeah. Really? I'm intelligent. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah, you are. Um, oh, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so so she won't date any younger, which I, I found that surprising. Did you? Yeah, I did. I think she, yeah, no. Uh, that did not surprise me. Really? No, Why? she doesn't need, she, what does she need, like a 35-year-old, a 40-year-old? No. Sophia Vergara needs someone mature and like and 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 seasoned and like in that and i'm uh, maybe i'm speaking <laughs> for myself actually and also sophia do you not agree I, this season I... of your life oh Colony yeah 63 oh. so, wow like, wow so, <laughs> and then, but genuinely, he calls me nana <laughs> <laughs> she's two years older than me at uh, this season of your life truly Here's my thing. It's like I am 31 now. Mm -hmm. The I think the youngest, the youngest I would date. Come on. Be realistic. Is realistically the youngest I would actually date. Can I guess? Yeah, guess because I I'm debating between two. <coughs> 27. 27, you're right. The youngest I would date would be 27, but I think the oldest I'd go. I go old. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Why is this? <laughs> I'm well, not... this is this is really dirty. But you can really date a twenty-seven-year-old. They have to be extreme. Listen, they have to be really. They have to be really, really mature. How old is Jacob Lordy? <laughs> How old is Jacob Lordy? <laughs> is he hey Siri. Is he's... Again, How old is Jacob like... Lordy? Jacob Lordy's twenty-six. Okay. Oh, I We're lowering 26. it to twenty-six. I go twenty-six. We're gonna go okay? a solid twenty-six. I feel like yeah. for for someone that I was like extreme, like really interested in, or that had like a, a like a more mature demeanor, I would I would go like that age. Yeah. But I feel like typically, like I go for like at least like five years older than me. Oh, for sure, at least. At least. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. No, same, same. Let's see what people okay. are saying in the in the in the chats too. Okay, now there's. Oh, John says now there's two different minimum ages I have for datings. For dating and jump offs. Okay, We're so tell us. Yeah, we, we yeah. need to know. Everyone, everyone, chime in with their thoughts. I. <sighs> <laughs> but here's the thing with Sofia Vergara, like she is quite simply so hot and has such, such like a youthful spirit that like mm -hmm. I could see her pulling a share and dating someone like <laughs> way way younger. I'm sorry, but Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny's 29 by the way. In case I'm just wondering, if Bad Bunny featured me in a song, like uh -huh. I would be all over that. Like I yeah. would, if I was Sophia, I'd be like for sure. Look, look, here's the thing. Like we just did with Jacob Lordy, there are exceptions. <clears throat> Jacob Lordy walks in the room, you're not going to care that he's 26. Do you know what I mean? Do you agree? Also, yeah. I, the one time I was in the room with Jacob Lordy. And, and what was, was that experience like? Uh, ethereal. I mean, I transcend him. <laughs> How old is Barry Keegan? Okay, because he's serious. actually, I actually think hey, I'm more serious. attracted to him than Jacob. How old is Barry Carpenter. Keegan? Yeah, I'm so jealous. Barry is dating Sabrina Carpenter. S I'm really serious. jealous of that. Siri's still listening to you. Do you have anything else you want to say? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get a quick answer, so we're just, we're going to have to go. Okay, later. you can have Jacob, I'll have Barry, but anyways. But so. John, by the way, one, one more thing about being in the same room as Jacob Lordy, he is so, he's taller than you could ever imagine. <laughs> well, isn't he, I feel like I could imagine, isn't he 6'5"? <laughs> 
Yeah. So I guess that's, yeah. Just write about what you do. Okay, by the way, John says dating. Probably 33? Wait, is your oldest or youngest? No, I think he's saying that's his youngest. Oh, that's your youngest? You go, okay, right? even oldest. Old. Yeah. Yeah, because he said my boyfriend yeah. is 40 He's now. too old. First off, Jason is going to be mad that you said his age on live, okay? Oh, he's oh, the youngest. youngest. John, you would go younger than that. I know you would. Mm. There's no way. Mm-hmm. What's the youngest you think you'd go? 26. Okay, 26. You're just saying next to Jacob Lordy. <laughs> exactly. I, it's all I can think about at this point. Jacob Lordy, too. Um, um, okay. Anyways. Can we talk about Rihanna? Yeah, let's talk about Rihanna because this, we have to end on Rihanna. This <clears throat> is an incredible moment that happened between her and Natalie Portman. And I think we should just take a look. It's yeah. super cute. Excuse <laughs> me. I. I. Love you. Yeah, I kind of a a are you kidding me? You are one of the hottest <laughs> bitches in Hollywood <laughs> forever. <laughs> I'm gonna you do the faint. most innocent look, and I'm like, ah! Oh. I'm gonna black out. <laughs> I love you, and I listen to your music all the time, and I just such a queen. Thank you. Can somebody take a oh picture? Oh my god, really? for yeah, a queen, like, a queen, queen shot. shot. A queen oh shot. shot. Oh my god. Look at me, yeah. Yes. I feel like those are like the, <sighs> like two ultimate queens. Like, come on, Natalie Portman and Rihanna. First of all, how have they not crossed paths before? I think often we think that a lot of these celebrities that we love have have met and mingled at some of these events and things. That was, first of all, Rihanna's outfit. Yeah, was a 10 oh, out of 10. fully. Was she always is though. She always I is. And I, th- I, I love that clip and I love ending on that because I'm just like, it's also so cool to see like mm-hmm. women supporting women that way and Rihanna, who is probably literally the baddest bitch on the planet, being like, you're a bad bitch. You're an icon. Like, that's got to feel, I'm sure Natalie is like just replaying that clip over and over. You spend so much time on, on red carpets and at a cool iHeart events. Who, who would that be for you? And you can't say oh, Taylor Swift, Kelsey Bellary, Oh, that I fangirled over? Yeah. Okay, I know I've told y'all this story before, but when I was first getting started again, I was so excited to be on the red carpets that, like, I'll never forget, like, m- being in the presence of Viola Davis. Mm. And I actually started crying. And oh, I, I was watching. Yeah, because I remember, because she was like, okay, we can calm down a bit. <laughs> I think she's probably like, why is this girl crying? But I think that was the most exciting and the most, like, star power I felt because she has such a presence that that, to me, was like, that was such a big moment. Who would you say is yours? Jacob Lordy? You will never <laughs> guess what I'm about to say. The 2008 runner-up of American Idol, David Archuleta. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen! No. Blank stares throughout the entire room. Oh it's either... <laughs> yeah, no, actually, it feels doable. Um, it's either him or Kenny Ortega, the director behind the High School Musical trilogy, but anyway. <laughs> and a special guest on our next big show. We'll call him in. <laughs> Please. Oh, my God. Okay, but honestly, right now, though, if you could beat someone, like, who would you really truly be starstruck by? Oh, my God. That you haven't, yeah, that you haven't met Okay, before. and not Taylor? I would say uh, Lady Gaga. Ooh. I think would just be like that moment would feel that level of like I can't even be- I can't even begin to like tell you how much you mean to me and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just by the way, speaking of Grammys, I just rewatched her Born This Way performance from 2011 when that's she debuted that song on the Grammys. Wait, was that remember that she came? Too. Which one was this one? No, this is when she came in in the egg. Y'all remember oh, that? Oh yeah. And we're like, when is yeah. she? And she emerged and she performed that for the first time. And she sang, no matter gay, straight, or bi, lesbian, transgender life, like on stage. It was 2011. Oh, that's so great. Anyway, I can't wait for the Grammys. No, the Grammys are actually so so epic. Yeah. And I can't believe that Sunday. So something to look forward to. So mark your calendars to, yeah. to watch that. Anyway, yeah, this has been such a great show. So Did you have a good time? I had a great time. It's always such. And you know what? Listen, year. we. It's very tempting to get swept up in. It's winter. What is there to look forward to? There is so much to look forward to right now. Like I cannot wait to take a 14-hour slumber. Eat in the shower when I wake up. <laughs> All of that, plus <laughs> the Grammys and the Oscars that I was talking about. But, uh, me too, of course. But um, anyway, and I think we'll be back to recap maybe some of those soon. Yeah, can't wait. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for chatting. Um, and yeah, can't wait to see you back. Make sure if you haven't already that you are subscribed to iHeart's Twitch channel and uh, we'll be going live every Tuesday and we'll see you there. So thank you guys. Bye. And give it up Bye. for our crew. Yeah. Woo.